The answer is yes, we should use gene editing to make better babies. Unpacking this a little bit, uh, gene editing includes subtracting, adding, or substituting DNA in cells. Our debate topic very notably does not mention heritable or germline. To make better babies means making them healthier, as in, how is, is your baby feeling better today? This debate is not about, can anything go wrong? Of course, it could go wrong. Uh, but rather than banning cars completely, we regulate. We minimize risk via airbags, children's car seats, and speed limits. Benefits must weigh, outweigh the harm. That's the decision. Similarly, we've been working very hard to minimize potential risks uh, of uh, gene, gene therapy and editing, the negatives, uh, off-target effects, slippery slopes to unneeded enhancements, high costs, and high unknown impact in unconsented future generations. This debate is about, given extensive safety improvements and testing, Will we accept FDA-approved use of gene editing in babies? In fact, do we approve of gene editing that is already happening to make babies better? For example, CAR-T anti-cancer therapies involve gene editing babies as young as seven months. AstraZeneca and Sputnik COVID-19 vaccines are adenoviral capsid delivery of DNA, which via maternal antibodies protect babies. Note that the cost of these can be as low as $2 a dose, which is a big step towards equitable access, which I know is an issue. Even earlier in life are prenatal gene therapies. These have been tested since 2018 for Gaucher's disease, in which babies would otherwise die in two years. Many serious de novo genetic diseases in babies are undetectable in parental genomes. For example, Rett syndrome, which also has a gene therapy in testing. So we need to do this um, independent of the parental risk. Any one of these four examples, CAR-T, COVID, Gaucher's, and RET, should be sufficient to settle this debate. But what if we feel obliged to also consider heritable changes or enhancements, despite both topics absent in the debate title? If so, then consider the scenario of a human-specific disease without effective vaccines and with persistent and emerging drug resistance over decades, as for example, HIV and malaria. Germline editing of one or more proteins could make our cells more chimpanzee-like and hence make us resistant with few or no side effects, as is seen in nature for HIV and malaria, where chimpanzees are resistant to our particular form. Rather than a ban on FDA-approved gene editing, as we have now um, in certain cases, um, we need to encourage a culture of whistleblowing on inappropriate use. Current laws did allow criminal punishment of three people so far, but these laws did, do not necessarily prevent future abuses of the same nature or prevent covert governmental use. So this is what we should emphatically resist. While just as emphatically encouraging carefully regulated clinical trials on gene editing to prevent childhood diseases. So please vote yes for ethical, cautious gene editing to make better babies. George, for people who don't know the terminology, can you please just take a moment to define germline for us? So uh, germline gene therapy would be something that affects uh, not just the individual but affects subsequent generations is heritable, is another term. Uh, somatic gene therapy would be something that only affects the current generation, as far as we know. Um, that's the, the distinction. 